Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host Jeffrey Lazarus and welcome back to yet another episode of Let's Play Dark Souls. So if you remember in the last episode, actually I'd prefer just to not remember the last episode at all, but the main things that we actually did do was we picked up some poison arrows, we picked up some regular arrows, and we also got the dingy set, which I am wearing the chest piece of. We also found out that our firekeeper had been killed, Lautrec was missing, and Kingseeker Framped had showed up. And as you can see, the gates across the bridge here are now open. So we're going to make our way into Sen's Fortress, or as many people call it, Sen's Funhouse. And you'll see why once we get there. But kind of the gimmick to Sen's Fortress, and you'll see this very shortly, is that this place is full of traps. You can see a pressure plate there on the ground. Sen's Fortress. Now as we come in, we're going to encounter some new enemies, man serpents, bait them down, and then step on the pressure plate, and you see, it actually did enough damage to kill one of them outright by shooting him in the back with multiple arrows. So now, what we're going to do for this guy is we're just going to kind of hang back on the bridge. Oh, I'm not doing near enough damage to him. Alright, great chaos fireball. Oh! Managed to slam it right into the wall next to me. Alright, well, with my lack of damage, this should be fun. Why, pray tell, am I not doing enough damage? Uchi Katana plus five. Seems like... Whoops. Seems like I should be doing... Hmm. Well, this could be an issue. I think I may have forgotten to do some upgrading. I'm not going to stop at the bonfire, but I am going to go talk to Andre down here and see if I can't do a little more upgrading, and then we'll make our way into Sense Fortress proper. And the reason I'm not resting at the bonfire is I really don't want to deal with those two snake men again. So let's just talk to Andre. Oh, there you can see him asking us for the large ember. Yeah, I hadn't actually made my way back over here. Okay. So now... We will have the ability to modify our Uchi Katana to plus six. We can then reinforce it further by using Titanite Shards, large Titanite Shards to be specific. Now we have a plus seven Uchi Katana. That will give us a little bit more damage. And you'll hear a lot of Dark Souls players say this, equipment is more important than levels, and I couldn't agree more, except when you're talking about weapons that scale with damage. To a point, yes, the um, the level of your weapon is going to be more effective, but if you don't have scaling stats with it, it's still, not, it's still only going to do so much damage. So, right up here where these two serpents were, we're going to break through these pots, pillage this corpse, and we will get the soul of a brave warrior. Now, we're about to enter one of my both favorite and most hated places in this game. I love the design of the place, but I hate coming through here because it's almost always a huge pain. And as you can see, remember when I said full of traps? Yeah. So here we have another one of the snake men. If we can just... Oh, wow. I tried to parry in a attack I actually couldn't parry. I'm getting the crap kicked out of me. Alright, so, the alternate version of killing this guy, since apparently I can't do it the way I normally would, break our lock on, run past him, and see if we can't goad him into getting knocked off by the guillotine. There he goes. That'll take care of him. Now, on to the next bridge of death up here. We have another set of guillotines, and this time, we've got this dude throwing lightning at us head on. Also, I... wow. That should have killed me more than likely. Oh, uh-oh. There we are, backstab. 
I was trying to push him back so I could use that arrow trap to my advantage. As you can see, I ended up eating most of the arrow trap myself. But, we did manage to take him out. And now we can open up this chest, and this will give us two more large titanite shards. And I never bought the weapon smith box. Uh-oh. I knew I was forgetting something. Alright, well, we will make do. Now, from up here... You'll see there's a snake man down there just kind of hanging out. And as we head across, you'll see him get rolled over by a boulder. And we want to walk up here in the walkway. Sometimes that will outright kill him. Most of the time, he'll still be coming at you. But if we stand in the doorway with our shield up, he can't really get past. There we are. That takes care of him. Now we can get a look. And as you can see, the boulder is running, rolling down a staircase. It rolls past, and then it rolls down the hill. We need to get past that boulder. So there's a couple of things to do here, and we're going to try and do all of them. First things first, when the boulder goes past, simply run, get up the first set of stairs, and then dip into the doorway. Because then we can go this snake mage into getting thumped by the boulder and getting himself killed. Then we can run up the stairs. Probably should have waited to make sure the boulder wasn't going to crush my head in, but whatever. And up here we will find the ring of steel protection. Which actually will be way more useful than any of the rings I have on right now. Boost defense versus physical attacks, always handy. And from here, what we're going to want to do is run back down and go through the door. I don't know why I'm running with my shield up. Go through this door. There are a couple more items over there, but we will come back and get them in a little bit. Next thing we want to do is come into this hallway, and you'll see another arrow trap on the floor. And if I can, I would like to goad this lizard that's in the other room into coming after me. Oh, that does the trick. Oh, boy. All right, now if we can get him into this room, once again, trying to use the traps to my own advantage. Because that arrow trap is actually on the wall that was behind us. So stand here, wait for him to get into the hallway. That's right, commit yourself. There we are. And now he's down. So, next thing to do is head on up these stairs, and we should see the boulder come by once again. That's very much a theme. So we're going to Estus up, even though we're not that low in health. We're going to wait for the boulder to come by again. And then we're actually going to follow it down and hopefully not have one smash into our backside when we get to the bottom then we're just going to stand right here in this doorway and as you can see there's a chute right there that chute is going to fill up with boulders And once it does, we will have access to another area of the fortress and another item that is very, very useful for specific things. Which we'll talk about a little more when we actually pick it up. So just hanging out, waiting on the boulders. I don't want to move into the next room yet because I want to make sure I get this while I'm still down here. So you can see that one's actually clogged up the chute finally. Should have one more come rolling by. as you can see, it took down the wall, so now we can run across, run in here, and we will grab the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring. What that does is it boosts your item discovery. Oh, God! I forgot about that, too. Fantastic. So, the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring boosts item discovery. Damn, now we have to run through the lower part again. Um... 
it's very good if you're trying to farm specific items such as Titanite chunks or Titanite slabs or a specific weapon off of a specific enemy. You can put on the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring, pop on... Really, you only need to use one Humanity because that also boosts your item discovery. It goes up with your Humanity up to 10, but using one gives you a huge boost, and then afterwards it's diminishing returns. But the Gold Serpent Ring will also boost your item discovery. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually just going to show another way that you can do this, which is just basically a run for your life, at least through the first section. Because... If you have the correct timing to get through these guillotines, then these guys will most likely get knocked off by them. Oh! Duh, crap. Oh, we survived the fall into a... Wow. All right. This is apparently just not my day for Dark Souls. Well, let's make another run at this. I was hoping to complete the entire area in one go, as I think I stated earlier. But it doesn't look like that is going to be much of an option. So let's just do this the right way. First things first, let's get in here. And let's... You know, we can... Mm, we can do it the way I was just doing it, but, uh, it's really not the best of ideas. Whoa! First time I've ever seen them bunch up at the door like that. Alright, so let's make our way across here. Through the next set of blades. Please get knocked off and die. Oh, boy. Please get knocked off and die. Okay, that takes care of him. It doesn't look like the other ones either... Actually, he didn't die. He just fell. He probably landed where I was earlier. No point in grabbing my uh, blood stain, being that there was nothing in it. So now we're going to make our way slowly and surely across this second bridge. Can I just kick you off? Thank you. Makes my life so much easier. Alright, so... Oh, and that one actually died. Fantastic. So, once again, make our way over here. We want to wait and check, make sure we don't have to dodge boulders. I can hear boulders going in another part of the fortress, so I believe we are safe. And you know what? Since the boulders aren't coming over here. What we can actually do is go and get the other items over here right now rather than having to come back. So. We just need to... Really? Really? Ladies and gentlemen, Dark Souls. <sighs> well, definitely not going to make it through the entire thing in one go. Let's just try and make it to the bloody bonfire. Christ. Normally, 
Aside from my very first time going through Sen's Fortress, I have never had this much trouble. Never! I do not understand it. Gah! Of course, this is how it goes down when I'm actually recording a playthrough rather than just, you know, playing through the game normally. Oh, no, no. Okay, break the lock on. Oh, let's just go. Bye. Ow! Lightning bolt in the back. Alright, so my goal has changed slightly at this point. I was going to show you how to get as many of the items in Sense Fortress as possible, but of the items that are of concern to me, I believe I have all but eh, there's one other item I want I absolutely want to get while I'm here that you know could still result in my death before the bonfire so I think I will grab that so let's run out here recover our power and get up to the next doorway same tactic as last time. Oh, there you are. Bet you just get wrecked by the boulder. Alright, and again, same tactic as last time. Come on. Get through that hallway, you big bastard. Let's do this thing. Since Fortress has now officially angered me. Normally, I actually don't mind running through this place. It's kind of fun getting through and dodging these traps and fighting a new enemy type. But now they've just freaking pissed me off. So we should have boulders coming on this side again. And we do. Surprise, surprise. Wait for that one to roll by under us, drop down. Now we'll be able to actually duck into this room. And in here, we're going to encounter something new. So you see, oh, hey, treasure chest. But there are a few things that we need to notice here. First off, and it's really difficult to see. I'm trying to get a good angle on it. But if you look at the chain on the right side of the chest, you'll see this one actually curves forward. Kind of the chain dangles out in front of the chest. All the other ones curve backwards. And right there you can see the chest moving. Of course now it's not going to do it again. But basically... Oh, there it goes. You can see just that slight movement. That is a tell. But this chest is no chest. It is, in fact, a mimic. And mimics are very, very dangerous, because if you open a mimic chest... What will happen is the thing will grab you and immediately try and eat you, and it'll most likely one-shot you. But this one contains the lightning spear, which I will be wanting later on. I don't remember if I said it on this playthrough, but spears are one of my favorite types of weapons because they can be used with your shield up. So I will be using that later on, maybe turning it into something else. So now we're going to want to take this elevator up, but if you notice the blood on the platform, we want to get off of this elevator as soon as it lets us, because if you don't, squash right up against those spikes. Now, we'll make our way up this ramp. And 
And from here, we can actually see the room where the boulders are coming from. So we just want to watch and make sure that it's actually not coming our direction. And then we can head up to the actual room with the boulders and we can affect their direction. And the boulders will go in the opposite direction of where the lever is facing. So turn it this way and we'll knock them down that path we were just at. And you'll actually see damage numbers pop up. Remember that snake man that was leaning against the wall, having a good old time, just hanging out, not even taking part in the fight? Yeah, well, he's getting smashed to death by that boulder. And we actually want that to happen because then we can get down into the area behind him. If you remember, we already had a boulder break one wall for us. Why not have it break another? So now what we're going to want to do that that has been taken care of is we're going to want to turn this back all the way to the other side. And then we'll just simply head down here and down here we'll find the snake man is dead. We'll find this walkway and we will find an item as well as a character. So let's talk to this gentleman while we are here. Hmm. You seem quite easy. A rare thing in these times. I am Logan. I'm a bit cooped up, as you can see. I have a bright idea. Suppose you set me free. I'm old and empty-handed, but I could repay you with knowledge and sorcery. This place is melting my mind. The inactivity is real. I must log a few things first, and I owe you a favor. I will return to Farlink Shrine. Speak with me there, so that I may impart my source over. So, this gentleman is Big Hat Logan, and as he said, he's going to go back to Firelink Shrine. He will teach us sorcery, so on and so forth. If you are playing an intelligence-based character, he is... A character that you absolutely want to rescue because he will eventually get some of the best spells in the game for you to use. So what we're going to do now is simply continue back up to the room we were just in. The room where we were allowed to change the direction of the boulder. And from there, we are, if memory serves correctly, just a short jog from the bonfire. Oh, great. And it's coming this direction again. So, we're going to go with option B here. I showed you option A of how to get there. Option B requires... Hold on. <laughs> requires you be the bravest and dumbest sort of soul. I'm going to run up here, get around the corner, and... Well, at least it batted us out of the way and we are still alive. But you can actually, if you do it perfectly, make that run up, dive out of the way, and not get hit by the boulder. As you could probably tell, I did not make it perfectly. As you could probably tell there, and from my recent, or my other incident, the boulder will reset on its own. So, we are now a very short way from the bonfire. Well, relatively short in consideration of where we started. We have another pressure plate trap. We'll just step on this. I didn't actually step on it. Set those off into the wall so now we can simply walk past. Now we have... another walkway that we will have to navigate with the swinging blades. This one narrower and the blades much, much closer together, so much so that it almost looks like there's no way through them. 
So we're going to sprint straight across, immediately turn right, and we'll find another one of these guys. Now I'm out. Am I out of great cast fireballs? That's really disheartening. It's okay. I can burn him down with my regular fireballs. And that ought to do him in. Now we'll want to head up the staircase first and cut down this mage. Oh, there we are. And before we go any further, we're going to want to come back down and go around the corner. And the reason we go up and cut down that character is basically so that they don't come down behind us when we go around here, because there is another lizard man. I'm not a huge fan of these guys. I do like their weapon, although I can't really use it on this character. Also, I can pelt my fireball right into the wall. That seems like a good idea. But if we can actually use the angles of the walkway to our advantage here... There we are. And over here, we will find... What is over here? It's another... Oh, Titanite Shards. Large Titanite Shards, as a matter of fact. Those will be useful for upgrading our Uchi Katana further once we are able to do so. But we need to get to that bonfire first. Also, I will probably spend these souls on... Oh, I'm out of fireballs. That was a terrible idea. We'll probably spend those souls on getting the upgrade boxes. And as you can see, we have another one of these guys over here. I'm going to attempt to make it across the bridge without getting blasted off by lightning or knocked off by the pendulums. Uh, that was real close. And more pressure plate traps. Just circumvent those, come around behind this guy, and let's cut him down because we are oh so close to that sweet, sweet bonfire. Woo, jeez, almost stepped off the ledge. That's all right. So once again, back through this pressure plate trap and through the other pressure plate. You just hug the wall there, you can get past them without setting them off. Through this fog wall, and then we are going to have a sprint for our life. If you look, when we come up here, you'll see scorch marks on the ground. Like right there. Oh, jeez. There are actually giant firebombs that will come crashing down on these areas. So we come over to this break in the wall, drop down, and we have found the Sen's Fortress Bonfire. Thank the gods. I'm going to rest. I'm going to hang on to these souls. And that will be the end of this episode of Let's Play Dark Souls. We've finally made it to Sense Fortress Bonfire after taking entirely too long. But in the next episode, we'll be finishing out Sense Fortress, at least the rest of what I want to do here. And then we will hopefully defeat the boss of the fortress, and make our way to the next area, which is one of the most frustrating areas in the game, and also one of my favorite areas in the game, and Orlando, City of the Gods. But we still have some work ahead of us before that. So, as always, I have been your host, Jeffrey Lazarus, and thank you for watching.